Hi there, and welcome to the Mercer Knits Knitting Podcast. My name is Caroline, and I am a knitter based in Minnesota, and this is kind of where I come to chat about my knitting and my spinning and sometimes weaving and sometimes felting and any kind of fiber arts so that I don't drive my family, who I live with, absolutely insane as I talk about crafts all the time. Um, it has been a long time since I filmed my last video. It has not been a long time since I posted my last video, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Unless I also wait two plus months to edit and upload this video. Um, ideally, this should be up within a week or so. Today is the 21st of September. I have not listened to the Earth, Wind & Fire song yet. I think I ought to. Probably should have on my commute home from work, but I didn't even think about it. Um, and yeah, it's it's been a long time. Uh, last time, I think I only had one finished object. I'd just been on a trip to Seattle. Um, since then, I've taken another trip to northern Wisconsin, Madeline Island, where I have a bunch of family members who live there. Um, so I was there visiting them, staying with my grandma, having a lovely time swimming in Lake Superior every single day. Um, and then I've just been at work and knitting. I honestly think I have six finished objects, but I do think my knitting has kind of slowed down. I've been reading a lot. I've been spinning a lot. I volunteered at the state fair, um, spinning for the Minnesota Weavers Guild. That was a very fun four hours of my life. Um, and yeah, it's just that kind of sparked me into a huge, just like spinning phase. Um, beyond that, I had been spinning up more fiber for a shawl that I was in the middle of last time that I have since finished. So I have a ton of extra fiber from that, but I had to spin up 250 grams worth of Coriadale to finish that shawl. Um, which, tragically, I really didn't need that much more fiber in the end. So I spun it all up. I've got it ready to go, but yeah, I really didn't need that much. A little, a little sad. But anyway, moving into the finished objects, let's just get going. Um, starting with one that I was working on last time. These are my acorn socks. I have two of them. They're finished. I finished these guys while up visiting one of my grandmas who lives in northern Wisconsin. And I love them. I think they are so, so cute. There's something really satisfying to me about this cuff. I think they're really, really nice. And these are in Naughty Pine Fiber Co's yarn in the colorway Another Glorious Morning from their Halloween collection. Really, really like this. Um, every once in a while, I think I see it on in their like in stock updates. I all see this colorway and some of their other Halloween colorways. Um, I haven't worn these that much. It's only just started cooling down in the past few weeks. It was really, really hot for a while. Um, so thank God it's been cooling down a little bit and it feels like fall. Right now we're in, a, it's, right now it's again getting a little hot. Um, I think we're in the low 80s right now, but we're gonna get rain and I'm really excited for rain because I just got a skylight installed, which is why the lighting in here is so much better. Um, I didn't realize what an impact that would have in my room. I thought it would, but um, it's just about tripled the amount of light, I would say, that I have in my room, the amount of natural light. It's a completely different room. It feels great. It feels a lot dustier. <laughs> I'm gonna have to be way more on top of my cleaning and forgive the noise from outside. I have my windows open. I will have my windows open every day of the year that I'm able to because I love fresh air. So those are my acorn socks. They're delightful. They are the last pair of socks I completed. I started another pair. They're still in my whips. Um, that were supposed to be my August socks. If you've watched um, some of my other videos, you'll know I was kind of trying to challenge myself to knit a pair of socks every month this year. August is when I fell off. <laughs> so I'm still working on my August socks. I don't know if they'll even be finished by the end of September. And I know exactly why I fell off. It's because they're color work. But um, I 
don't really care. I don't really mind. I'm trying not to, when I set these like lot these goals for myself, I'm trying not to put myself down if I don't finish them. So I'll get those socks done eventually and I'll move on to a different pair and that'll be fine. I have a ton of sock yarn. I can knit socks whenever I want to. It's okay. And I've been doing other things. So that's all fine. On to my second finished object. This one I was also working on in my last video. Um, this is my my little secret crop top by Jesse May Designs. I don't think I modified this except for adding length in the body. I added multiple inches in the body and it is it's pretty cropped. Um, the sleet, the these the straps I made I think significantly shorter but they are still I would probably take another inch out of them if I were to re-knit them. I think I left the ends Oh, this is inside out right now. Yeah, I left the ends pretty findable, so I might go in and rip an inch out and refinish them just because it, they're a little long, but it's not the end of the world. Um, I really like this. I was wearing this a lot when it was really hot. Um, and it's a nice thing to like throw on when I'm just at, at my house and I'm warm and I think it'll be a nice base layer in the winter as well. So I'm really excited about that and I do plan on knitting more of them. And I love this colorway. It's from um, Coastal Yarns, which is here. I'll turn it right side out, shall I? It's from Coastal Yarns, which is a yarn store in Cannon Beach, Oregon. And this is the Lichen colorway in their Sneaker Waves DK yarn. Very, very pretty. I'm really kind of wanting more blues, more blue in my life. Um, green is my favorite color. My room is very, very green, but I really like blue as well. Blue used to be my favorite color and then somehow green just took over. Okay, third finished object that I had on the needles last time is my hedgerow shawl. It's finally finished. This thing sat abandoned for quite a while and it's huge. I'll get up to show you it. Here she is. It is a very large shawl. this very, very easily in the winter if I'm out shoveling and stuff. It could just be worn like this. My idea behind this is that a lot of times, okay, I'll get close. A lot of times, it's too hot for me to wear this on my shoulders. In the morning, I will wake up and I'll crawl downstairs in my pajamas and I'll throw this ratty old blanket over my shoulders because I'm cold. And it just seemed silly to me that as a knitter, I had not knit a shawl to replace that ratty old blanket. Like at least a shawl looks semi nicer, even if it's a hand spun shawl that is kind of thick and thin all over the place. So I think I ran out of my original hand spun around, hmm. well, okay. Firstly, I feel like you can see kind of, there's a point where things start to get a little more see-through. And I think that's around, here or so when I started needing my newer hand spun which is a lot more even and generally thinner than the original hand spun was so oh, that means the very tip of my shawl is a little bit different um but that's okay I'm okay with it and you still can't really see the motif on the ends and you know what that's okay. I can see it in person, but you really can't see it on camera. I talked about that in my last video. This yarn choice is not the best, and I knew that going in. I just didn't care, but I'm so happy to have it finished, and it's just going to be huge, and I'm very excited for it in the winter. Um, in terms of this pattern, I liked it. I do have some caveats with that. I think I really love Fox and Folks patterns. Um, I think they're so beautiful and they have this kind of, they have this charm to them. They feel very kind of rustic and 
country. I, I'm saying that gently because I don't want it to sound insulting because it's not. That's not. They just, they feel rustic, I guess. Um, and not in like a cliche kind of way. Um, however, I find the pattern clarity with Fox and Folk's pattern to be rather difficult. I, there were a few times, especially the very end of that pattern, I essentially completely guessed because I just didn't feel like things were lining up the way I expected them to, or there was a point where they were just like bind off all the remainder of the stitches and there were a ton of stitches left and I was like, that's not correct. Um, there was a point where the stitch count, they would give a stitch count at the end of every row and they only said to like decrease one. But then they were like, the stitch count now should be, I don't know, like multiple stitches less than the previous one. So I was like, what did I miss? Like what, what decrease did I miss? Cause I didn't see any other decreases. So I go into detail on that in my Ravelry. I, I don't know if it's just that all of the testers are like extremely advanced knitters or they're people who have test knit for Fox and Folk a lot so they understand how that person writes their patterns. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I just don't really see how some of these clarity issues didn't get brought up in testing because I noticed this a similar issue with the Skylark socks. And additionally, I remember with that pattern, there was a part in the flower motif that I didn't understand at all. And I actually had to reach out to the designer to get pattern support on that because there was this triple increase that I felt was not explained. <laughs> like even when I went in and I was, what is a T1 increase? Like I looked in the little stitch glossary. Um, the explanation I got in my email after I reached out was very different to the explanation in the pattern. So, and I, I don't necessarily consider myself a beginner knitter at this point. I would in terms of like color work and stuff, but in terms of knitting like a garter stitch shawl, got that pretty much in the bag. I understand cables pretty well. I understand lace pretty well. Um, like there are obviously certain techniques that I would consider myself a beginner, but nothing in this pattern. So I don't know, it just made me curious as to who's testing or in like, yeah, I don't know. And that's a tangent, but I just don't find the pattern clarity fantastic for that pattern. And it makes me question if I want to get more Fox and Folk patterns, which is a shame because I really like a lot of them, but there are moments of extreme frustration that I've experienced with both of the patterns that I've tried where I just am like, I don't know what the designer wants me to do here. And I've read it a million times and I still don't understand. So I just make it up like I do what I think sounds correct. And then I write a note for myself in my Ravelry so that I can redo that if I ever get to that point again, or if I put the project down for a while, then pick it back up. Um, because I don't want to experience that frustration twice and if the pattern isn't giving me the information that I need to just do that then I know that I have to make a note for myself because I'll probably feel the same way. So that's my hedgerow shawl. So glad that that is off my needles. For a while I had four or five whips going um, and they were just stressing me out. Now I'm down to two and it feels so much better. Um, my, let me put my finished whips over here so I don't get confused. My next whip I'm actually wearing. This is my third A1 blouse and this one I added puff sleeves. This is my A1 blouse knit in, um, wow, the sun is really coming in and really washing me out. Perf. I'd have to like shade this. Well, how can I shade it? Like that? Okay, great. I just put yarn in front of it. Awesome. So, this one, let me back up again, is like this. This one I knit in Long Dog Yarns, um, Deep Breath Before the Plunge. Uh, I think it's Merino, finger, the Merino Fingering base. I'm 99% sure about that. And I really, really like it. I decided to do 
puff sleeves. I made it longer than my other two Aowen blouses so I can wear it with my jeans and it's it doesn't really show skin which is great. That was kind of my goal with it was to try to not have very much skin showing because the other two are like significantly more cropped. Um, and then I did the puff sleeves but I did modify them so they aren't nearly as puffed as the original pattern. I did half the amount of the puff sleeve increases as recommended. I think in my on my size there were six increases suggested. I knew I wouldn't want a super puffy sleeve. There's this thing that happens with these puffs that I should say this is a Fable Knitwear pattern, the A1 blouse. I've already said that bit, but yes, Fable Knitwear. And when she, she does these puff sleeves a lot and there's this thing that happens with them where they do that when people have like their arms raised that I just think looks so awkward. And sometimes if the puff is even more extreme, it looks like that even when their arms are down. And I just don't want that. I want a subtle puff. And I feel like what I should have done um, was maybe start the puff earlier I don't know. I know I wrote notes about this in my Ravelry about how to continue modifying this because I don't know if I continued it or if I either wanted to do them later or do them earlier. Or if I want to do them all and do like a rapid decrease. I had some thoughts and I hope I wrote them down because otherwise they're out of my brain forever. But I was very hesitant about these puff sleeves and I do like them. I was like, considering whether I was going to rip them out. I worked through it and I wore it a few times and it's nothing that's going to stop me from wearing it. So I'm fine with them. They're good. I don't think, I probably will re-knit this pattern. I have at least two different like quantities of yarn that are either for this or like another t-shirt because um, it's just like two skeins of fingering weight yarn. So I will almost definitely knit this again because I love the square neckline and I haven't done any of them with the little sleeve ruffles. And I was considering doing that with this one since it already has the puff sleeves. But I just really like the sleeves the way they are. I might do it and see how I feel and they'd be easy to rip out if I don't like them. That's a thought for the future, but I love the square neckline of this top. So I think in my future ones, I probably will continue to not do the puff sleeves unless I randomly decide that I love them. But right now, in my opinion, the other two that I have that don't have puff sleeves are just more versatile. Additionally, I think it's interesting. I actually do need my hair out of the way to show you this. I feel like the ones that don't have the puff sleeves, the neckline is a little tighter. So they don't feel quite like they're slipping off my shoulders like this one almost it it'll like have a very wide neck and sometimes I have to like shimmy it up so that my bra strap isn't showing or like the very edge of my bra which is like right here isn't showing I don't feel like I have that problem with my other two and I know that's because the shoulders are actually I feel like they're a little too tight um something about not doing those increases and then doing the decreases just leads to a bit of a tight feeling up there but I don't mind that feeling and it makes me feel like my sleeves aren't gonna fall off my shoulders, which is a huge pet peeve of mine. So I will re-knit this. It's debatable whether I will do puff sleeves or the little frilly bits. What I would really love to do is one with long sleeves. She has a recipe for like a long sleeve version in her on the pattern but I have never had enough yarn to do that one. So I always have like two skeins of fingering and I think I would need three. Yeah, I really like this A1 blouse. I'm really jazzed to have a third one. I want more. I just don't want to knit one right now. So yeah, I also want to knit a Tolsta tee. I really want to knit a ranunculus. I need to make a separate video about things that I want to knit. That's neither here nor there right now. Let's talk about my next finished object. That is this. Hold on, let me kind of. This is a Lalu shawl by Sari Nordland. Let's see if you can see it. It's just so hard to show lace, I feel like. 
it has lace and cables. And it's just a little shawlette. Um, you can wear it like this in the winter and while you're shoveling, which I think is very, very cute. Um, could probably tie it back too, to be kind of, I feel like this is the look that people do. Maybe I'll try it out. There's also, I haven't tried wearing it like this, but I feel like this is probably the best call in terms of me wearing it as like a little scarf, but it's pretty small. Um, or like short in terms of wearing as a scarf. So, yes, but I like it a lot. It was a really fun knit and it, it took me a while, but that's cause I kept putting it down and not picking it back up. Um, but I would knit more of these, absolutely. It was very like satisfying to finish. I think it's a total of five charts. And each time I finished one, I was so satisfied to be done with that chart. I was so happy about it. And this I actually knit with my hand spun. So the main color in this is my confetti hand spun that I got from at Shepherd's Harvest um, from Gip Bent's Farm or Badger Face Fiber. Um, and I spun it up. It's about a fingering weight, maybe a more of a sport weight. And then I held it together with some knitting for olive mohair in the shade cloud it's kind of a pinkish cream uh, and I just thought it would go really well with the general pink tones of this hand spun I'm really pleased with how it came out for being a hand spun I think my hand spun was relatively even um, it was a little under plied and it was only a two ply but I think holding it with that mohair helped give the cables the definition that you would want them to have but then the lace is also pretty open, although it does kind of get lost in the mohair fuzz. Um, really pleased. I have some of this left. I recently got a yardage counter for like when you're putting things on and knitting on it, you just let it run through this yard counter and they'll tell you how many yards of yarn you have, which is fantastic. Um, so I kind of want to reskein it up and figure out how many yards I have left so that I, I know, um, cause it's just like in a little cake right now. So that is my fifth finished object, I believe. Really jazzed. I think I'm probably gonna be making some of those as gifts this Christmas, if I can get around to gift knitting. Um, I have this hot pink yarn I got from the Fable Knitwear Advent and I think my mom would really like it in hot pink. I have some blue, I have a lot of like one skein of fingering weight, one skein of mohair from that advent. And I'm not doing that advent again this year. I wasn't obsessed with it last year. The colors just weren't quite for me. They were kind of that like 50s vintage vibe, which is not my favorite style of vintage. So yeah, I don't know. And this year I already bought two other advents and I couldn't really justify another like $300 order. So, especially because right now I've been pretty darn good about not buying yarn. I have my, um, I have my Farmer's Daughter Fiber Sock Squad uh, that I get every month and I'm planning on keeping that to the end of the year. I'm just letting myself do that. And then I'm not gonna get it again next year because I, have tons of sock yarn and I'd rather be feel like I can buy one skein of sock yarn from like an indie dyer if they are having a collection and something really catches my eye rather than thinking oh you shouldn't buy that because you have the sock squad and you can really only I really only knit one pair of socks a month max before it starts to bother me knitting socks so getting more than one skein of sock yarn a month just doesn't really make sense for me especially one skein of expensive sock yarn a month like it'd be one thing if I was buying a ten dollar skein of sock yarn but it's another thing when it's like a thirty dollar skein of sock yarn it's like you don't need multiple of those in a month so I think that's gonna be my approach to that next year also I signed back up for the hello yarn fiber club because I've been spinning so much um, and I finally feel like 
I'm at a good point with my spinning where I'm confident enough to use those fibers and treat them a little less preciously. I really want to spin those up eventually when I get enough colorways that I think work together into a night shift shawl. I think that's what that pattern is called by Andrea Mowry. That would be an ideal. Those are, that's an air and weight shawl. So I'm a little nervous about my ability to spin air and weight. Um, right now I'm getting very, it's consistent, consistently coming up to more of a fingering weight at this point. So I'm doing that subscription and I will continue with that subscription. That's my current plan. So yes, I'm doing a pretty good job of not buying yarn. I am, I have some temptations right now. There are a few collections that I have my eye on. I have a pattern that I really want to knit out of um, Knits About Winter and I found a yarn that I think is pretty perfect for it. And I, I know I shouldn't, but I think I might. I think I might get it. I just think it'd be so pretty. And I honestly, I need to put that book away. I'm knitting something out of it right now. So it's out. Um, and it's such a dangerous book. It makes me want to buy yarn to knit everything in there. Um, Cause I have a, yeah, it's dangerous. So my final finished object. I finally finished him. This is Hugo the zebra. This is his little tail. His tail is sewn on a little wonky, okay? It's fine. I also, this is a little too short, but I was not gonna fix that. And his head is a little, it's my mom's dog barking downstairs. His head is a little wobbly, but honestly, I went around with mattress stitch, like straight up three or four times. So I don't think it's going anywhere. It's just a little wobbly. So he's so cute and I love him. Um, but he is going to my cousin's baby. That's where he belongs with my cousin's baby, not as a play toy, because like I said, the last time his eyes are not fully on there, but yes, I do want to knit him his little, his little, um, overalls out of this. This is Sheepy's Catonia. I've been using Sheepy's for this whole project. So it's the recommended yarn. I didn't really want to mess around with finding a different yarn. And I do believe my local yarn store stocks it. So easy peasy. Um, except for this. I don't think they stock this. Or they didn't stock it in the color that I wanted. I don't know. But this I bought online. On Lovecrafts, I think. So yes, I need to cast this on and then give it to her, but I don't think I'm going to cast it on quite yet because I have two projects that I'm working on and I just want them. I want like one, the chunk of it that I'm working on to be wrapped up and then I want these socks done. So let's dive into the socks, which right now are still on hiatus. So these are the pressed flower socks. Actually, they look really good on camera. Wait a second. These look so good right now. This is where my ankle or my heel will go. These in person, I did not feel like the contrast was gonna be enough, but on camera, they're looking kind of killer if I do say so myself. So these, I'm, I saw this pattern come out and I was just like, I need them. Cause I've been, I've eyed the pressed flower shawl. I don't really like the cardigan or the, I think there's a sweater maybe. Um, I've never really been tempted by that, um, but the pressed flower shawl, absolutely tempted by. So the, this came out and I was like, great. I think the recommended yarn was Rosaria Mondine, um, which I, Retrosaria? Retrosaria Mondine, which I've never tried before, but I've always wanted to. So I got it. I ordered it from, I think, La Mercerie. I don't know if the ball bands are actually in there. I do believe the colors, I have them listed on my Ravelry, the exact colors that I'm using. But um, this one is the same color that the pattern designer 
Amy Christoffers used for hers. And then this one is not the same because that one was sold out. Um, so this is, I, this one's called like wizard something. And it's this like pink and dark blue and black kind of gradient color situation, um, which the darker tones, like this really dark color blends in with the green kind of. So whenever I get to those sections, I kind of feel like it's not great, but the rest of it looks very, very cute. So this is my first sock. I did not finish the first one before I put them down and promptly ignored them, but I'm enjoying it. I don't think my floats are terrible. This is my first time doing mosaic knitting. I don't think they're awful. Oh my goodness, the sun is just beaming down. Bad time for me to film. I'm just not used to the lighting in this room right yet. Eep. Yeah, I think my folds are okay. I don't think anything's too tight. I should be able to get it on pretty easily. Yeah, I like it. I mean, I enjoyed the pattern when I was working on it. I've just put it down and now I'm not picking it back up, which is pretty typical with me and socks. So that's one of my whips. I'm kind of hoping to have that done. It'd be nice if I had it done before October, but I don't think I will, like I said, um, because my other whip I am fully engrossed in which is the second half of, or the second quarter of my East Wind jacket. Here, this is what it looks like. <laughs> it looks really sad right now because it's just all curly and yeah, but here are the cables. So the East Wind jacket is a pattern by Emily Bowden and she is a yarn dyer up in Canada. Although I think she might be done dying or something there was I signed up for her newsletter and I saw she said it was like the last restock and she was like oh thank you for your responses to my last newsletter and I was like oh shoot I never saw it um so I don't know if she's done dying or if it's just like a for right now thing or what's going on if she's closing her yarn store I'm not quite sure but she wrote it's about winter and this is in it's about winter it's this beautiful, beautiful jacket that has all these tiny cables on them. Boop, 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 boop. That kind of make it look like little things like blowing in the wind, like little seeds. And then it has this beautiful cable here. So you knit this in panels, um, two front panels and two back panels. You do little underarm stitches for a gusset and then you pick up for the first half of the sleeve, which like hangs down and then you knit the second half of the sleeve in the round after you've seamed it. Um, and then you pick up for the button band here, which will have like toggles. And then I'm choosing to cast off, not do the like built in collar and instead pick up the collar afterwards because a lot of the people who have knit this said the collar is too wide. And in some of the pictures, it looks too wide. I'll actually go get my book to show you. Let's see. I know there's a picture of it in here somewhere. It's the picture for this, the hat. Yes, right here. Okay. So in this picture, you can see this is the neckline for it. It's just really wide. And inside she has, she's wearing this other layer that I desperately want to knit called Frost. It's this beautiful mohair base layer piece that I want so, so badly. Um, but again, I should make another video about the things I want in it for winter and fall, but we're already a chunk of the way through fall. And what do I have to show for it? Ch a chunk of my East Wind jacket. But um, I knit in the spring, I got this yarn and I knit, and I knit one quarter of it. So this is what it looks like after being blocked. I still don't have the pocket in this one kind of, hold on. Okay, well, the sleeve obviously is not sitting, but this is kind of what it looks like. And there's a little pocket. It goes down to like, I don't know, it'll be higher, but it goes down to, and it like hits my thigh for sure. And then there we have picked up collar, lots of positive ease. Yeah, I'm really excited for this guy. It's very, pretty. 
I'm knitting that in Anthology Yarn Co. That is yarn that is milled in Wisconsin. It is a Midwest Coriadale um, that's wool and spun at a place in Wisconsin, a mill in Wisconsin, and it is dyed in St. Paul, Minnesota um, by someone who works at the yarnery, my local yarn store. So last time when I was talking to him about the possibility of me buying yarn for this project, um, he said to me that there might not be much more of this yarn coming because the mill was closing. However, I just see them continuing to restock it. I keep my I keep my eye on it because now that I've knit with it, I'm obsessed. I'm knitting it in the shades Inky Cap 60. That's my main color. And then I have this contrast color, which I don't think I'll need very much of. I have two skeins of it. Each skein is 65 grams and 200 yards. And the second one is Chanterelle 40. That's my alternative. And me thinking that I won't need both skeins and that I'll possibly only need one skein makes me think that I kind of want to knit a sweater in Chanterelle 40. It's this just beautiful golden color that has all this like depth and like kind of readiness to it. It's stunning. And I'm also knitting this. I'm holding the main color together with knitting for olive mohair, the shade Dark Moose, which I think is a pretty spot on color blend. I think it's pretty gorgeous. So very, very excited to work on that. I think I'm, I'm almost done with the first panel or the second panel, and then it's onto the back. Um, so I'm jazzed about that, but I am currently trying to convince myself not to buy six more skeins of the Chanterelle 40 to knit a, um, I want it for the stick season sweater by the Crayobea by Rebecca Klo. I think it'd be so pretty. So I'm trying to convince myself out of doing that. We'll see if I'm successful. But that's my second whip. Now let's chat about spinning really quickly before I'm done. I've been spinning a lot. So I started with this yarn and I have um, this skein and then I have another that I caked up that I need to reskein to store for long term because I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. But this is my Coriadale that I have left over. It's a pretty even spin. It's like significantly better than my earlier stuff. Love her. Um, really, really excited. I, so I spun this so fast. Uh, I w brought my wheel up to Madeline Island when I was up there. And I had some family members who heard that I brought my wheel because the first few days my back really hurt because the night before I'd been, the night before I went up, I'd been plying for hours sitting in a very bad, like I think I was like this the whole time. Terrible, bad idea, don't do that. Um, so my back hurt most of the time, so I wasn't spinning. Uh, but then I, my, some of my family members heard that I brought my wheel up and they wanted to see. So I brought my wheel out and I started spinning this and I just had to finish it. I was so jazzed about how much easier it was um, because before, I'd been spinning this, I'd been spinning this, and then I have that skein that I showed in my last video that's like a, uh, it's like a reddy, orangey gorgeousness. And those were pretty hard to draft. Like the, the fibers weren't all aligned, so they wouldn't smoothly like escape from each other. They would like get stuck. So I was like tugging them out to draft them quite regularly. Um, this, Oh my God, it would just, I would, it would just be like, pff, pff, pff. like it was so, so fast drafting it. And it was so fast to spin. And I kept noticing I had to like actively tell myself to spin thicker using like my gauge card. So that made me feel like it was just going so, so quickly. And at that point too, I'd gotten to the point where I don't really have to like split my braid very much. I can just, I can just draft from like the huge chunk. Um, so I was doing that with this and it, it, I was like, wow, that huge chunk is gone. Fantastic. Like I did so much. Um, so that spin went really fast and really reinvigorated how I felt about spinning. Um, so right after that, I started another project, which was my first skein of the Hello Yarn fiber that I decided to spin. 
and I picked one that I wasn't as obsessed with, but one that I liked more than some of them. Um, and I decided to make this my first fractal spin. And this is how it came out. It's gorgeous. I love it so much. Um, these colors still aren't 100% me. This is the December Hello Yarn Fiber Club in the shade December 2022 in the shade Pastille. Pastille? I think Pastille because of French, but it could be Pastille. I don't know. And it is just stunning. It's just gorgeous. I so I split the braid in half. I only had one. I only get like one bag of hell yarn fiber. I don't do the two bag one. Which maybe if I continue spinning, I'll think about that one because that seems like a perfect way just to get like two skeins of fractal spun yarn. You just spin one straight and then you split the other one into fourths or six or whatever. Um, that seems really easy and it like it would lead to pretty even bobbins, which miraculously my bobbin was pretty evenly split and I did not measure this out when I split it in half. I was like, well, well, let's hope it's not terribly done. So this one I spun straight through half of it. Um, so that has like longer color repeats. And then the other one I split into fourths to get this guy, which is just so pretty. So gorgeous and I don't know what I'm gonna do with her. Maybe a hat because it's really soft. It's really really soft and I'm it, it just worked out so well. Um, I think it's generally a fingering weight but it might be more of a sport. Some bits I was worried when I was applying this. I felt like some bits were really muddy looking but you know, some colors just like don't go together as well. Like look at that, but it's still beautiful. So I'm super happy with it. And from this, I immediately went into another fractal spin. Um, this one I don't know if I'm as happy about, but I think it's just the yarn. Now that I have it spun up and plied and like in a skein, I'm cool with it. But at the time the braids looked so vibrant and rich. Um, that it just felt very muted and dull when I finally did it, like applied it. But I think I'm happy with it because it reminds me of fall, like crunchy leaves. And it's this, hold on, I think if I hold it back here, yeah. So this one I had two four ounce braids about, one was like 4.2 and one was 4.1, I think, um, from Wolamina on Etsy and just stunning there it's B, it's bfl like a mixed bfl base blue face luster and it's gorgeous so one of them i spun straight just the the sink the chunk of the braid and then the other one i think i split into fourths as well and i've only plied this one the other two are i'm literally propping my phone up against the other two bobbins or the the rest of the bobbins and i need to ply it but i'm not doing it today because I think I applied this when I jumped right into my east wind and now I'm just working on my east wind but I'm very happy with this I'm hoping I'll have enough this is I think hold on I have my little card right here these are my little tags um this is 135 grams of fiber and it's about 480 yards according to my yard counter so that puts it I think a little thicker than a fingering weight generally and I'm hoping I'll have enough to knit maybe a collar out of it. I think that would be nice and very pretty. And I think I, have, I saw one that used a similar stitch to the Cargill, like a dip stitch situation um, that I thought looked pretty nice, but it had a surprisingly low yardage count. I don't know if I trust it. And I don't know if I wanna put the energy into buying the pattern and starting it just to realize I don't have enough yarn and I can't get any more of this fiber because it was independently dyed. So yeah, that is my projects. I don't, I guess those were also my yarn acquisitions. I haven't bought any yarn in a long time. I'm just knitting what I have or I'm trying to, and I'm trying to start knitting with my hand spun. 
that's what I want to do. Anyway, that is all I have for you today. I, or I guess, hold on, let me grab my, my wet felting stuff. Final thing. I took a class right when I got back from my trip. I'm going to sit a little further away. I feel like I'm too close. I'm gonna, I took a wet felting class and I could make, I made two pieces in it. Um, these were, I would say, heavily inspired by the artist I was taking the class with. Her name is Andrea, Andy Jacobs. And yeah, we got to do wet felting. One, I really loved like the, the texture of wet felting, I think is really satisfying. So we started with a white base and then we just added stuff on there. And what I really liked and what I, this was my first one, was the idea of like putting a bunch of colors in and then layering like soft layers of the plane over it to kind of try to make it look really layered and three-dimensional and um, kind of cloudy almost so you have like sections of that in here and you have sections of like yarn that we put in that I covered with other stuff so they kind of disappear part way through and then reappear kind of looking like they're like traveling through and that's what I really liked the idea of so I continued that with my second one and my original plan with this one was that it would be the base of a project bag however it ended up huge <laughs> way bigger than i thought it was going to so the lighting is kind of anyway this one i did a lot more layering there's a lot of like yarn that starts and then disappears in to like behind all the layers of wool um i think i brought i don't think i brought hand spun to this one but i did use some of Andy's hand spun and I just kept adding to it honestly just layering and layering and layering until I thought I'd be happy with it um I am I think it's awesome I think it looks I don't know like really creepy but in like the best possible way like with the light behind it it looks so cool Ooh, look how kind of gross that looks over here Ooh, icky up there oh do look so cool. So anyway, if you haven't tried wet felting, you should try it. It's a very physical process, but it felt very intuitive. And just the idea of just like throwing things down and like mushing it all together and making it into this amorphous thing really appealed to me. Just like, don't think for me, the approach I took was like, don't think too hard, just do. Um, some people made like gorgeous wall hangings of like flowers and stuff that were just stunning but not me so i actually don't really have a plan for these they just kind of exist they sit on a little tray in my room but i love them and i'd like to do more i guess someday when i move out maybe they'll become trivets i like hot pad things but for now they just exist in my room and that's all i've got for you today this is almost an hour long uh, what are what are you knitting right now? What have you been working on? Have you been trying any new crafts? I kind of want to continue doing weaving, but I don't have a loom. So here we are. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a beautiful weekend. I hope your September has been going well. Mine is absolute chaos. I'm exhausted all the time, and that's okay. Um, yeah, I hope you get out this weekend if you have good weather, and that you have time to make if that's what you want to do or you rest if that's not what you want to do. I think it's important that we not guilt ourselves when we're not producing. Um, I think sometimes being in the crafting world you feel like you have to constantly be producing and every moment has to be productive and I don't think that's true. So 